You click this button and boom, new drum loop. I'm going to show you how you can click one button inside of Ableton and it's going to create an endless amount of new drum loops, percussion loops, top loops that are super catchy and super groovy. This basically gives you an infinite number of new drum loops to work with and you only need to be using the samples that you already own. This will work for any genre, but I'm going to be focusing on deep, progressive and organic house material, which is what I cover in this video and a lot of my other tutorials. If that's the type of music that you produce, consider subscribing and let's get started. Starting with this organic house example, example. definitely need some percussion to really drive the track and make it more memorable. And I'm going to solo the kick, hat, clap, and shakers just to create a foundation of groove to work from. Next, I want to create my own drum loop with a click of a button. So I'm going to insert a MIDI track. I want to grab a drum rack and throw that into the MIDI track. And I'm going to fill this with a bunch of different samples. And you can hand pick these samples, but grabbing just a bunch of random ones is going to inspire your creativity. It's going to save you time and it's going to let you experiment. I'm going to grab about 20 or 25 different wooden percussions here. And this is where the fun begins. So the drum rack is full. And now with the click of one button, I'm going to create a completely new drum loop using this free to download Max for Live device. Max for Live. It's called AICD, I pronounce it acid, drop that in, and without touching anything else, without adding anything else, listen to what this is already doing to the drum rack. So I've already created a drum loop and all I did was drop acid. I mean, drop in the acid. So I created a drum loop and all I did was dropped in the acid device. I like the sounds of that already, let's test out in the track. I wanted to change this, but I liked the rhythmic pattern. I didn't want to change the rhythm. I just wanted to change some of the instruments. I could actually go in and change them individually inside this piano roll, or I could use this pitch MIDI effect as well. So the pitch MIDI effect I'll put in after the acid, but before the drum rack. And now when I move up and down the pitch, it's going to change the different selected samples inside of the drum rack. I like that better actually. This is happening because the drum rack is actually using MIDI to choose the different drums. So if I look at the MIDI information in the piano roll, each of the drums is assigned to a different key. The acid device is creating a MIDI pattern. It's actually supposed to be used for acid type bass lines, but using it before the drum rack and choosing different pitches and different velocities creates really nice drum loops. And that's what's going on here. So by using this pitch tool, I'm moving it up or down in the semitones, which is creating a different pattern by choosing different drums inside of the drum rack. I can also do this manually by choosing in the different notes here. So if I wanted to change maybe this one here. So by changing the different notes inside of the sequencer, then it is actually changing the different percussion that it's grabbing from the drum rack. But I want to add in a little bit of randomness to this drum loop to make it even more interesting and professional. So I can actually increase the temperature here. And that's going to add a bit of randomness. You can also save some of your own presets. You can choose the length of the loop. And lastly, you can go into the individual parameters like pitch and velocity and change the different settings inside of here. I like it the way it is. Let's actually add in another layer. So I'm going to group this all together so that it makes an instrument rack. In that instrument rack, I'm going to rename this one to wood because that's the instruments that I chose. I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to choose a different drum rack instrument. So I'm going to delete this drum rack. I'm going to grab a new one, throw that in, and I'm going to grab a different instrument now. Toms can get a little bit messy. Let's get something a little bit easier to work with, like maybe some congas. So I'm gonna grab the congas, I'm gonna grab all of them and throw that in there, give it more of like a tribal organic feel. So let's rename this one to uh, congas. Solo this, and I can just use the same pattern right away, see how it sounds. I like that, let's try it with the kick. That actually sounds really cool. So I'm gonna keep that with the other drum loop as well. Let's listen to all of them together. But now I'm using the pattern that is just kind of duplicated over the other one. So I'm going to scooch that over using these arrows.
And there we go. Now it sounds pretty dynamic. It's not just repeating the same pattern. We can try to generate something new even. Sounds a little bit messy, but I kind of like it. That sounds pretty good. The only caveat to this is that sometimes when you're writing these, you get a bunch of different samples and maybe they're not in the right pitch or the right key. And maybe they're just not the samples that you want to be using. So you can go in and use the fine tuning in here. But if you do like a sample that you enjoy, just open it up inside of your drum rack. I can open up my chains here to actually see which ones are playing and when. Solo them. Say I don't like this one, I could even just turn that off. And this one, maybe this one's not in the right pitch, so I can go into the sample itself and change the pitch. I can change the attack, decay, sustain, release. Uh, you can change the sample itself and you can actually pan inside here, turn the volume, like it's still a drum rack, so you still have complete control over all these different instruments. The acid is just using sequencing to create the drum loop. So maybe the drum loop feels a little bit full or it, there's just too many things going on. I can just mute some of the instruments that are playing. So I'll generate a new one. There's too much going on there. So I can go in and try and find whichever sample. Looks like it's this one here. So I can just mute that. And it just gives me more control over that loop. Just wanted to quickly interrupt the video to let you know I actually teach music production in online courses as well as coaching. So check the description for links to both of those if you're really interested in increasing your production quality. All right, back to the video. Say you're happy with the drum loop and you want to save it for later or you want to start to audition different drum loops, but you don't want to get rid of this one. You can record it to audio. So you can just right click, insert an audio track, external in, change that to the instrument, which is number nine and then hit record. And you can record the actual audio of the loop. If you wanna record the MIDI, you just do the same thing as audio, but you actually have to remove the instruments out of the instrument rack. Otherwise, it's not going to record the MIDI. By the way, if you wanna download this project file and a ton of other project files, sample packs, presets, and more, click the link in the description below, which will bring you to my Patreon, or click this link in the corner right here. So lastly, I'm going to show you what happens when you add shakers to this drum rack. So I dropped a new drum rack in, and now I'm going to add a bunch of shakers. All right, let's take a listen. Unfortunately, it doesn't really work well with shakers, but if you want to make good shaker loops like the one you're hearing right now, then click this video right here where I show you exactly how to do that. 